let's consider the velocity trend for fluid in a straight pipe of constant diameter. We're going to derive the velocity in the pipe using the principle of mass conservation or continuity. From basic principles, we know that mass cannot be created or destroyed in a typical process. We also know that for a steady state process, there is no accumulation of mass in the process over time. Applying these principles to water flowing in a straight pipe, we can say that the mass of water entering the pipe has to be equal to the mass of water leaving the pipe, or, in other words, the mass flow rate must be constant. Next, let's determine how to relate the mass flow rate to the fluid velocity. For an incompressible fluid, such as water, or a fluid whose density is not a function of pressure, we can easily relate the mass flow rate to the volumetric flow rate by simply dividing the mass flow rate by the density. From this relationship, we can also see that the volumetric flow rate of an incompressible fluid must be constant through a pipe. Finally, we must relate volumetric flow rate to velocity. We can say that volumetric flow rate is equal to the fluid velocity multiplied by the area of flow which, for our pipe, is the circular cross-sectional area calculated using the inside diameter of the pipe. Using this definition of volumetric flow rate, let's consider how the velocity changes from the beginning to the end of a straight pipe. We'll begin by setting the volumetric flow rate at the inlet equal to the volumetric flow rate at the outlet, since mass must be conserved. Next, we can substitute the definition of the flow rate in terms of velocity and area. Since our pipe has a constant cross-sectional area, we know from this relationship that the velocity of the fluid must also be constant through the length of the pipe. Here are some thought exercises for you to consider. Using the equation we derived for volumetric flow rate in terms of area and velocity, determine how the velocity would change in a pipe with an increasing diameter. How would the assumptions we made to relate mass flow rate to velocity change if we had a compressible fluid in the pipe? such as a gas.